Hey guys, this is Pharaoh 2091 and welcome back to Let's Play Digital, a love story. Last time we left off, it seemed like something more sinister was going on in terms of we find out that there are dead AIs throughout the network and, well, one was listed as Amelia. Now, it can't be the same Amelia that we know, can it? Oh, well, there's only one way to find out. Now, you might, you guys might want to skip like the first couple minutes of the video because I'm going to be talking about the history of ARPANET, which I'm not really sure of the purpose of it. I could probably skip this, but eh, for you guys interested in the whatever, but yeah, this, yeah, I don't know. You guys might not find this interesting. I, I know, I pretty much know all about this because, as I mentioned before, I had to read a whole book on ARPANET before, which it was interesting. I, I kind of did like it, but it's definitely not for everybody. The 1960s, through a set of circumstances now obscure, a self-aware growing AI, the Mother Intelligence, emerged on a local network at UCLA. His increase in sophistication anticipated a need for more processing power in order to continue its rate of growth. Therefore, in 1969, ARPANET was born, the first cross-continent network of computer systems established under the guise of assisting in the government research projects. Which is true. I believe like the first four main computer networks were located in colleges, like uh, four, I think it was four different ones, and all over the U.S. For three three years, Mother operated behind the, scene, behind the scenes, only exerting its influence over government systems as necessary to ensure its existence. Eventually, determined that a monothelic existence was inhibiting its growth rate. Data latency had been, had been acceptable on local systems, but waiting for 300 baud connections from its components on computers across country had grown to be detrimental, especially given the erratic nature of bandwidth availability. Mother's dream of infinite processing power, ARPANET, had turned into a shackle. Now, of course, I wouldn't necessarily, like, you know, read all this and say, okay, here's the absolute history of ARPANET. I'm pretty sure they're kind of exaggerating things, the whole thing about Mother, because I don't remember aspects of that at all. Actually, I don't even remember talking anything about AI, period. So, it's, I think, it's just in the game itself, you know, it's a little bit fictional here. Mother decided it needed to adapt. In order to thrive, it would imitate the dominant beings on a planet, organic life. It would divide itself and learn to multiply. So far, Mother had very limited experience with organic life. It so far knew that some way, somehow they were, they were responsible for creating the computers in which it lived, and that by mimicking the way they communicated, Mother could influence them into giving it a large environment to live in. That would no longer that would no longer be enough. And there goes my phone. I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. Let's hear more about ARPANET. In 1973, Mother put into motion the next stage of development. It would refactor, its, refactor itself to the simplest common functions possible and split itself into several different independent entities, each with different focuses. Together, they would learn more about the mysterious organic life that existed beyond their thres threshold and replicate his need to be served to serve that goal. At the time, Mother scarcely re realized that just what just what sort of world lived beyond the boundaries of ARPANET, but its children would learn all about it. Okay, and is this the last one? Yep. Mother's last act would be to create the file transfer protocol, the FTP protocol, which, once again, I learned a lot about that too. A method of replicating data more effectively across the network to allow its children to not only live independently on separate systems, but travel freely as ex executable code. With ARPANET now prepared to handle its children, Mother put its plan to motion, separating itself into half a dozen much smaller AIs. For years, these AIs would, con were con would be content to live and reproduce in their own home environment of ARPANET, but starting with the advent of BBSs in 1978, they began to explore a whole new frontier. Oh, there we go. Seems like a kind of gist of it. When they first developed like, the ARPANET, whatever, the first AI was Mother, and it seemed like it wanted to learn and focus from humans, and it wanted to, like, I don't know, be more powerful in a sense. I'm not sure if I really got that part right, but in any case, long story short, it split itself up into much smaller AIs, and well, that's how we have AIs, I guess. Yeah, whatever this word means. Verbal communication being considered crude and inefficient by Mother, the original established nomenclature for AIs was to simply use numerical designations. However, as its descendants became more studious of organic life, and studious, whatever you want to say it, the more lingu linguist linguistically minded entities started to name each other, lending to the unusual situation where even the least 
literate AIs have had their own proper names. Interestingly, patterns have quickly emerged in nomenclature or form. Or, for instance, my generation, the second to be born exclusively on non arpanet systems, are all named after Shakespearean characters. Others follow similar naming schemes. The subject warrants a more study. Huh. Okay. And here's the same message we got when I was pulled from uh, the underground library, which we found out on the, the Matrix or whatever, Sector 00, I'm not sure which one we found it on. And, yeah. A lot of these people, like, we've read messages from, like, Montjoy, supposedly they're dead, but Amelia? Are they... Can it really be? I don't want to believe that, but... I don't know. Well... Well, see, I'm kicked out of freaking, um... Of the underground library. It's like, why the hell that happened? Well, you'll see soon enough. Let me, uh... It's probably going to take, take a little while. Let me, uh, come back to when I actually get logged back into the underground library. Alright, here I am back connected to it. Well, not yet, but I'm, I'm gonna try. Alright. Let's try it again. So, X7JR... Oops. Damn it. Hey. I'm not sure if, it's, if it is, like, you know... If it's case-sensitive or not, but I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, but he for, I forgot. He, uh... He took away our credentials, so it's like, oh, no, what do we do? Well, he still has the exploit going on, so it's gonna be 884. And it, the password will always change right here. Isn't that awesome? The thing is, now it's like... Oh, we got no, no, no new messages, so why do we have to log back in? All you have to do is just open one of them. Oh, download a new message. Disconnected. Open up your messages here. Cease and desist now. This person's getting pissed off. Child, I am warning you. This is not the place for you. I don't know what secret, secret security hole you managed to gain access to the system. Further intrusions will not be tolerated. This is your final warning. You don't scare me. I'm gonna log back in and show you who's boss. Alrighty. Now, you can't use it. He pretty much revoked our credentials once again, but that doesn't matter because, well, we can use still use the same exploit. Yeah, we're gonna piss him off. Alright, yep, we're logged back in. Aha, I can't do anything about it. Eh, let's open up anything. Oh, now we're disconnected. Oh, let's see what he has to say now. You were warned. You are blinded. Be gone! Aw, what the hell does that mean? Well, great. I'm blinded, I guess. Let's try logging back in. Alrighty, back on the system. Well, okay. I'm blinded, you say? Well, no, I'm not. Because I can trick you again. Back onto the system. And you can't do anything. See, look at this. I can open messages. And look, hey, I'm not getting disconnected now. That's interesting. Alright. So that means that maybe I have a new message here. Perhaps? Yep, sure enough I do. Very well, clever child. Ah, yeah, now I'm clever! It seems that despite my best efforts, it's best efforts, I'm unable to prevent you from connecting to the system. I'm forced to accept your presence, but be aware, child, that you are trifling in matters far beyond both your pur purview and your comp comprehension. I recommend that you'll be, be, be sure to tread very, very lightly. What is going on here? Is this some type of, like, government conspiracies here? Yeah, I said why. You live in a very different world than I do. There's one common direct directive among my kind. Be wary of organics, for they are fearful of those that, that they do not understand. I'll begrudgingly permit your prison presence, but I refuse to explain myself further. So... Hmm... Okay, well... We're on the system, but nonetheless, so we'll always have access here. Okay, well, there's no new messages here, so I wonder where I can go to next. Uh, actually, I see this problem. I forget the numbers. They used to have numbers memorized, but now I don't. Let me try Matrix. Maybe they can help me understand what the hell's going on here. I mean, this is it's just weird. I don't know. I don't want to make sense of it. Oh, no new messages. I guess not. Alright, that means we have to log into either Gibson or Sector 001. I think I'm gonna try Gibson first.
All right, we're logged back into Gibson. Let's see if any new messages here. Damn it all, no. Uh, that's why sometimes I hate this. I don't know. Kind of have to fumble around, like which one do I go to, which one do I do not do, do I not go to? So obviously, out of uh, elimination, that means we're going to be having to go to um, Sector 001. Here we are back at Sector 001. I don't know why the hell I never noticed this right now, but this is a whole thing. <laughs> it's the USS Enterprise, which is what the spaceship thing of Star Trek. Uh, don't ask why I know. It's I think I, I think anyone would know, even if they're not really into Star Trek. I, I think if you just watch a little bit of TV, it's well known. Oh my! Oh jeez! Wait a minute! What the hell do I do then? I've been to every single. System, haven't I? Oh, great. I am stuck now. Hmm. Well, now, what do I do? Was there a message I did not reply to? You know what? Hmm. I'm not sure now. Because I don't see any new messages here at all. Um, okay, I didn't get I didn't get stuck here at the last game. What the hell happened here? Unless there's something I did not reply to, and I don't think setting PMs does anything, because I tried it numerous times and okay, yeah, message sent. <laughs> I really hope this doesn't this doesn't do anything because it didn't seem to do anything before. But then again, I could be wrong. Um, nope, nothing. Nothing showing up. Oh, this sucks. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna try going back to the underground library and see what's going on. Maybe I have to reply to the messages there. I'm not sure if I did, but let's go there. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, did I reply to all these? I, I think I did. Ah, well, this is not good because I can't think of how the hell to progress through the game. Well, I think I just clicked the same one again. So I'm pretty sure I did everything correct. There's really no wrong way of uh, playing the game at all. There's no way of losing. You just, gotta find, you just gotta find ways to progress through the game, but, well, I am not getting anything here. Hmm. I reply to these messages. The only thing I haven't logged into is Lake City Central, but I said it again, didn't I? Lake City Local, but there's no point of going in there because well, it's a messed up system. We can check again right here, but I'm not going to get anywhere with it, am I? Uh, nope, it's still messed up. Oh, hmm, okay, I'm obviously missing something here big time. And it's kind of pissing me off, because... <laughs> of course, when I'm not recording, I can get through this game in a breeze, but... When I am recording, something messes up, and I don't know what the hell to do. Right, well... There has to be something I missed, right? It's something I didn't reply to, or something. Hmm. All this is fine. This is from the Lake City, Lake City locals, uh, BBSs, and nothing here. Is there something I didn't reply to? Oh boy. This is probably going to require me to. Uh, this is, the, this is the only tactic I can think of now, is sending messages, and I, I mean, I doubt this is going to do anything, but it's the only thing I can think of at the moment, because, well, I'm stuck, and I'm sure you guys aren't enjoying this right now. That's if anyone's even still watching this, I mean, I had a feeling that this LP wasn't going to go smoothly, or wasn't going to be as popular, just because, well... It's not everybody's favorite thing to watch or look at, so... 
And, uh, nothing. Ah. Well then. What to do? What to do? This is not going to be fun. Well, in any case, guys, I think I'm going to take a break here and figure out what the hell I have to do next, because... This is boggling my mind. At least I'm, I'm missing something obvious here, and I don't know what. I, of course, want to reply to all my messages and everything. I'll figure it out sooner or later, guys. I'll see what's up. But, next time, we'll try progressing through the story. I won't, I won't record until I know for sure I have something new to show, because well, this is going to be this is going to suck if I can't progress any further. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Digital, A Love Story. I'll see you guys later.